There was essentially no rules when it came to cryptocurrency. It was not regulated. People didn't know what cryptocurrency was. It was just the thing that people assumed was done in the black market and nobody understood it. So the government really didn't care because there wasn't that much money flowing through cryptocurrency. But over the last couple of years, especially after the pandemic, we've seen a big boom in cryptocurrency. We obviously saw the big boom and bust happen around 2018, but now we're seeing a more stable rise in cryptocurrency. Obviously it's still volatile, but we've been see more and more people start to adopt the idea of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and NFTs and the blockchain. And so now the government is starting to get more involved and now they want to start to create more rules which will dictate how you can use cryptocurrency. To give you a real example, let's not talk about cryptocurrency, let's talk about bananas. Now you'd think that I'd talk about avocados and guacamole, but I don't have any more avocados left. I actually just ate my last one this morning. So let's talk about bananas. If there was no regulations on how to sell bananas, now I could pluck bananas at whatever time that I wanted to, whether they're green, whether they're yellow, and then I could sell them however I want. I could go to your door, start knocking on your door and say, hey, do you wanna buy some bananas? I could put up a street stall wherever I wanted to and entice people to buy my bananas and I could charge whatever prices that I want for bananas. That's how selling bananas would be if there was no regulations. But regulations create more rules. Like the government could create a regulation saying that I can only sell bananas if they're not a certain shade of green. And the government can also create regulations saying that I can't just go and open up a food cart on the middle of a random street. I have to go and get a license and get approved first. And the government can create regulations saying that I'm not allowed to go door to door and start selling bananas. So these regulations create rules which people then have to abide by. Now again, some regulations can be good and some might be bad depending on how they're done. Like if the government said that I'm not allowed to sell bananas in general, well, that's not good regulation because now no one's gonna be able to eat my bananas. And if the government said, well, I can't sell bananas that are infested with bugs, well, that might be good for you, but maybe somebody wants bananas with bugs. This is why Kevin O'Leary says that you have to be prepared and most people don't understand this because we're going to see more regulations. He talks about four regulations specifically and they're going to impact the way you do cryptocurrency, which is why you need to be prepared. You need to be aware of what's going on on. And if you are actively buying and selling cryptocurrency or you've been thinking about buying and selling cryptocurrency, you want to make sure you're working with a brokerage that is understanding the regulations and has the right licenses. That way your money is protected. The first piece of regulation that Kevin O'Leary talks about is a new bill proposed by Senator Cynthia Loomis, where she put out a 600 page bill talking about regulating Bitcoin, stable coins, but not NFTs. Now, the interesting thing about this is she's not only called on other politicians, but she's been calling on private companies and private individuals to help advise her on how to regulate cryptocurrency and Kevin O'Leary is I guess one of those people. Senator Lummis, she is crafting this massive bill. It's over 600 pages. It's huge. And she's asking for input from the private sector, including investors like me. The second piece of regulation is the Joe Biden executive order on cryptocurrency, where he's not outlining cryptocurrency, but he wants to start regulating it. He wants the government to start thinking about a potential United States digital dollar. But there's also a big concern about climate change in that bill, which is a direct attack on Bitcoin mining. There's POTUS's executive order. The good news there is he's not outlawing cryptocurrencies. He's embracing it for the productivity enhancement. But buried in that order is a concern about climate change. And that is a direct swipe at the Bitcoin mining industry right now. Third is a piece of regulation by the SEC where they put out that every public company should be disclosing their carbon usage through a carbon audit. And their whole idea here is it's another way to regulate Bitcoin mining and how much energy is being used through cryptocurrency. Another vector that just hit the market in the last 14 days was the SEC memo about requiring carbon audits for every public company. Now that is scary. And then you have the Stablecoin Transparency Act by another senator, which is a bill which is designed strictly on regulating stablecoins. This bill does not want to eliminate stablecoins, rather it wants to audit stablecoins and it wants all stablecoins to disclose what assets that they own. It's, it's a bill that's coming from Haggerty. And all it says is, let's deal with one important vertical of crypto, stable coins. Mm -hmm. Let's disclose what's inside them, what backs up the value of them, let's audit them every month, and let's not let them own any asset with a duration of more than 12 months. What Kevin O'Leary says is that if these regulations go well, 
and they get passed without over-regulating cryptocurrency, then it can open the floodgates to money coming into cryptocurrency because now you're going to have the big pension funds, you're going to have the big institutions that are going to feel okay putting the money in cryptocurrency because it will create the opportunity for somebody to create an actual Bitcoin ETF or a Bitcoin fund where now it's an ETF that you can buy and sell on the stock market, but this fund owns actual Bitcoin. We talked about the first Bitcoin ETF on this channel when it first happened, but that first Bitcoin ETF doesn't actually own any Bitcoin. It's a derivative. It doesn't give you exposure to actual Bitcoin. It gives you exposure to a derivative of Bitcoin, but if these regulations work well, then Kevin Leary says, we're gonna see the creation of actual Bitcoin ETFs. And if that happens, now you can see major pension funds, major retirement funds, major funds around the United States that have billions of dollars pour their money into these cryptocurrency ETFs, which means you would see billions, if not trillions of dollars pour into the cryptocurrency market, which would essentially help explode the market capitalization of cryptocurrency. He also said that based on the new regulation proposals and based on what's happening with cryptocurrency right now, there's three things that he can derive. One, Bitcoin will never go to zero, according to Kevin O'Leary. Second, Bitcoin will not be outlawed and it will not be made illegal in the United States, according to Kevin O'Leary. And third, you're not going to see a super computer hack of Bitcoin, at least not yet. He says Bitcoin is not going to go to zero because you have more and more people around the world that are understanding the value of Bitcoin. And because of that, somebody is going to be willing to buy Bitcoin. So because of that, it will never go down to zero. He says it won't ever be made illegal because now the government is finally starting to understand and see the value and technology behind cryptocurrency. So it's going to be in their best interest not to make it illegal, especially considering how many people have an interest in cryptocurrency nowadays. And third, he says that we're not going to see a Bitcoin supercomputer hack at this time because it makes no sense for somebody to create a computer that could create this type of super hack because if a computer was powerful enough to do that, they would be better off just mining and creating more Bitcoins instead of trying to hack and steal other people's Bitcoins. If you enjoy the shorter clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love and why I add it if you're interested in learning more about how to invest your money in real estate, our team put together an amazing guide on real estate investing. This guide goes over what real estate investing is, how to start using real estate to generate cash flow, and how to build wealth with real estate. This guide is completely free when you sign up for a daily newsletter. So if you want to read our guide on how to start investing your money in real estate, you can download that guide just by clicking that button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling.